my name is Maya and welcome to the episode 22 of the Mila Hastings Knitting Podcast where I share all my thoughts, process and other random stuff about all things fiber related but mostly knitting. So today is the 9th of May 2024 and I'm coming to you from the French speaking part of Switzerland where I live with my gecko. You can find me on Instagram as milahist.com things and you can find links of everything I talk about down in the description box as well as my measurements if you are interested. So today, first I have a lovely bouquet next to me. <laughs> Let's please appreciate it for a while. <laughs> um, and regarding knitting, I have... Um, this is a little bit of an impromptu episode because usually I'll film on Saturdays but today is Thursday and it's a bank holiday, how do you call that? Like a public holiday. Like people don't work today, I don't, neither. <laughs> um, so I decided to film because tomorrow we are leaving for a completely improvised climbing weekend trip. So I can't film <laughs> on Saturday because I will be climbing. So uh, I'm filming today, which means I haven't finished the big whip of my life <laughs> that I was supposed to finish for this episode, but it's fine, I have other things to show. So if you're here for the finished Teddy Zip, uh, it's not finished, <laughs> but it will be soon. <laughs> so yeah, I still have a lot of stuff to share. I have one finished object still. Um, that's not the Teddy Zip, but I still have something. <laughs> I have two new castons, kind of. One, one is only a swatch, but yeah. And one future caston. Uh, actually, I signed up for two test knits last week, one of which is for Ozeta, Ozeda, and the other is for Kedri, and I was not expecting to get neither of them, but I got them both. <laughs> so now I have two test knits I need to do fast. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> so uh, I have this and, um, and acquisitions um, that I got actually quite a few weeks ago, but I just forgot to share about it. <laughs> So uh, that will be today and I think that's it and it's already enough I guess for, it, for an episode so let's get started. First, again, <laughs> please appreciate this bouquet. <laughs> I went to a wedding um, on Sunday, last Sunday, and the bride asked me to, I, I mean she asked everyone to please take some flowers with them and I already had the peonies, the white stuff down here and I added everything that's on top. I could have cut the stems because now they are a little bit <laughs> too high, but it's fine. <laughs> I like the layering effect. <laughs> so yeah, for today we have a nice bouquet of flowers. And I also have a, like, I mean, it's hard to show, but if I, maybe like this, yeah. The wedding was between, um, the bride was, is <laughs> Swiss, <laughs> and the, uh, Oh, I still don't know the, mo the word. <laughs> I already did that in the precedent episode. How do you say the bride but the man? <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> I still don't know. Yeah, the guy that got married, uh, he's from um, Algeria. So we had kind of a mix of cultures going on. So yeah, I have <laughs> still a tattoo on my hand. And uh, yeah, I just find it funny. <laughs> Anyway, for the knitting, so what I'm wearing, this is um, the Soho Top by Kadri. It's a super old knit. Um, I knit that, I mean, super old for me. <laughs> I knit that in the end of summer 2022, and it's knit entirely with cotton, and it's leftovers. So this is a cotton by Ice Yarns. It's called like turquoise jeans or something, and it's nice. I mean, it's a cool yarn, but it's a little bit too... I think, yeah, I held it double. No, not really. I held it with a strand of long yarns, baby cotton. Uh, so it's a 100% cotton top and the gauge is a little bit too stiff. I should have used bigger needles and changed the pattern, but it was a long time ago, so I didn't really think about that. So it's a nice garment. I like to wear it. Actually, I wore it a lot over the last two years, but it's kind of too too small in the armpits. Wow. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's a little bit constricting. 
and the fabric is very dense. I mean, it doesn't have really any drip uh, because of the gauge that's too small. Uh, yeah, so I just would like to replace it. And I decided to wear it today because the test knit I'm doing is very similar to this one. So I hope it will be a nice contender to actually replace this one so that I can give it away to someone that's maybe smaller than me and, uh, and that can wear it easily. Um, I have to say <laughs> that this is garter, so the first part is knit flat, but then you switch to garter in the round for this section, which means you have to purl uh, one round every other round. And uh, purling with the super tight gauge was difficult, <laughs> to say the least. And I hurt my wrist. Uh, it was two years ago, and to this day, it still hurts. I had to do, like, go to see different doctors, I had to do IRM, and I had a lot of trouble <laughs> with it. Uh, yeah, it cost me a lot, so this top is probably the most expensive I have in my whole wardrobe. Um, and the problem is not solved, and it probably won't never be, because it just... I broke something, basically, in my wrist, and now it's, it's hurting when I apply pressure like this, or like this. So yeah, don't purl with cotton yarn on a tight gauge, please. <laughs> anyway, so this is it for what I'm wearing, and uh, the first finish object I have is... Oh! It's this guy! It's the emotional support chicken, and he's definitely supporting me a lot. <laughs> I mean, he's so cute. It's so big, and round, and squishy. Hi! <laughs> I like it so much. So yeah, it's uh, you probably know this pattern by now, and it was... It was fun to do. Um, I did mention, I'm not gonna say everything I said in the present episode, uh, you can go and watch it if you'd like to get more details about this guy. But as I thought, I really started to lose it at the end, when I had to do all the stitching and sew all the small parts and sew everything together. I hate <laughs> those kind of finishing touches. And there were a lot of ends to weave in. I did the weave as you go method for a lot of them, but I still had some to do. And I really didn't like it. <laughs> but it's fine, in the end I have a nice product. But this isn't even for me, this is for my godson's first birthday. And I just hope it's gonna be something he treasures for years. It's probably going to get destroyed in no time, but it's fine. <laughs> it's okay. I'm prepared for it. <laughs> um, I didn't put plastic eyes. I used just a black yarn I had to sew some eyes because I couldn't be bothered to buy plastic eyes. And I just, even if they are called safety eyes, um, I still prefer to avoid having stuff he can eat. Or loose, and yeah, so that's my chicken. The yarn I used, this is very, very everything is old stash yarn ex except for the beak. So, this blue is um, also from the Ice Yarns website, it's Merino, whatever, worsted, I think. Um, it's not a worsted, it's definitely a decay. And the brown stripe is. Long Yarns Merino 70. This is a true worsted, and you can maybe tell, or probably not, but in real life you can kind of see the stuffing through this one, but this one is opaque, so there's a little bit of a different in gauge, but whatever. It's for a kid. <laughs> He's one year old, he's not gonna care. Um, this is the same yarn as this one, so it's also Long Yarns Merino 70. And this one, the orange, is actually a mini a 20 gram mini I bought to do the inside of a collar for of, or a neckline for a Nutiden yarn I bought that's about this color and I didn't want it to have the Nutiden around my neck so I bought this one but I think if I use 2 grams <laughs> to do the beak I'm still gonna have enough for the inside of the neck band so it's fine <laughs> so yeah I had everything in my stash so this is very satisfying in the end I used up a lot of yarn and it's great I also already had the um, stuffing at my place, so I didn't have to buy anything actually, so very nice, <laughs> super satisfying, and yeah, now I have, I can't stop hugging it, <laughs> it's so nice, I really like this shape here, 
so you can put your head inside it's really really comfortable <laughs> anyway so yeah that's this guy next project is a new cast on so it's somewhere there so the next one is the mini mock neck by Jessie May um, and it's going pretty fast I mean I have already joined it around this looks super small <laughs> but it's to be wrong with negative is so it's gonna be fine I mean if I stretch it yeah we're getting we're getting somewhere and the opening for the arm is actually this big so it's gonna be fine but yeah <laughs> it looks small uh, yeah, so the yarn I'm using is actually a project I had finished also two years ago, about the same time as this one, actually. Um, but I had only one skin of Olivia and Oliver Fibers classic sock on its merino nylon base in the colorway. I don't know how you say that. Uh, Lof no, yeah, Lofoten Island. It's a place in Norway. And it was a pre-order from her advent from 2021, I guess. And I only bought one skin, which is usually enough for me to make a summer top. But the project I chose um, was a little bit oversized and boxy. So it had a, like a boat neck thing. And it had lace, but it wasn't enough to get more fabric out of one skin. So it was just too short. And I chose a, a size too small because I was short on yarn. And I just couldn't wear it because it was too small and too short. So it was just laying in my closet for two years. I never wore it. And I was like, this is a shame <laughs> because this color is really one of my favorites ever. Like it's so beautiful and I just wasn't wearing it. So I decided to forget. So I did that and I cast on this one, which is first close fitting and it doesn't have uh, any shoulder or sleeve, so I'm saving yarn there. So I definitely should have enough yarn. And uh, the classic sock is a 420 meters per 100 gram instead of the usual 400, so I have a little bit more yardage. So it should definitely be enough for me to do the mini mock neck. So I'm knitting size 2 and I don't have anything to add about the pattern. It's just great, it's easy to follow, easy to knit. Hey. Yeah, it's just, it's just super nice. I'm <laughs> happy about it. As you can tell, I have noodle yarn because I couldn't be bothered to wash the yarn before using it again. Uh, sometimes, I mean, what I did for the beginning is that I will actually uh, steam the cake <laughs> directly <laughs> because it will remove the crinkleness on the first layer and it just does the same as just washing the yarn. It just means that you have to do it every 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 few times. <laughs> Whenever you, your yarn gets crinkly again, you just have to steam it again. So I will need to do it now, but it's an easy and lazy way to avoid having crinkles in the yarn while not having to wash it <laughs> before using it. So yeah, that's it. And uh, for the modifications, I'm using the recommended needles, which are 3.5. I have no idea if I'm on gauge, <laughs> but I probably am. I don't know. Uh, but it doesn't matter because it's negative ease anyway, and it should be fine. From my experience, knitting with this type of yarn, with this type, this type of needle, it should be fine. Um, so the modification I did, the um, first one is that I lengthen the back. So this is the back. <laughs> this is the front. <laughs> you cannot tell. Um, because, as I always say, I have a lot of muscle tissues on my back, so I tend to need a lot more fabric there, and I just always lengthen the back pieces of everything I knit when I can, so that I can cover that and avoid having the front being tugged by the back like this, because I'm missing fabric there. So to avoid that, I just add length to the back, and it's funny because the pattern is actually telling you not to do that. <laughs> Because the seam is sitting at the back of the collar, so there, instead of in the middle of the shoulder. And usually, for when you have a seam happening in a garment, it's at the top of the shoulder. Like for 
a bottom up, bottom up drop shoulder. If you do a three needle bind up for the for the shoulder, <laughs> it's gonna be in the middle. So people are used to having the seam here, but in this design, it's not. It's back there. So if you are not really aware of what's happening, it can be tempting to knit the back piece to the same length as the front to get the seam in the middle, but then your collar is not going to sit right. But I did it anyway, <laughs> because I need more fabric on the back. The back is still shorter though, so yeah, it's a little bit of a middle ground <laughs> that I did. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the fit is going to be great for my body, and that's what's important. And the other modification I'm doing is that you have... So the edgings are not picked up, you are doing ribbing uh, for like 5 or 6 stitches at the edge and then when you join in the round, at the underarm, you have a ribbing uh, where you cast on the stitches and then you just stop the ribbing and knit in stocking it. So what I'll be doing is I want to do decreases, body shaping at the underarms on both sides because I have 20 centimeters difference <laughs> between my upper bust and my waist so I need decreases. <laughs> If I want to have a tight fitting garment all the way. So I'm gonna do decreases at the underarms and I will keep doing the ribbing until it has completely disappeared in the decreases. If you see what I mean. <laughs> so yeah, that's the plan and it's gonna be finished in no time. Probably this weekend since we are leaving and I will need a simple project for the trip and this is just not now stocking it in the round with some decreases and ribbing so should be pretty quick to finish, so yeah. Oh, I have something funny to tell about the mini mock neck, is that I almost bought the pattern, even though I had a coupon code. <laughs> because I had done a test knit for Jessie May last year, for the framework Ragnar, which is actually in front of me, so I can show you. <laughs> I just did a, a laundry of my knitting, so this is the test knit I did. It's supposed to be long sleeve, but uh, I did short sleeves, and I got the coupon code for a free pattern from her library and I completely forgot about it because it was last year, last summer and I was about to click purchase on Ravelry and then I remembered wait, I don't need to pay for that <laughs> so I got the pattern for free which is nice and then I realized I have actually only bought one pattern this year <laughs> since the beginning and yeah we are like in May so it's funny. The only pattern I have bought actually is this one. Everything else was either a free pattern to begin with, or a test compensation, or just a test knit, or it was a long-term project, so something I had bought way before, or just a pattern I had laying in my pattern library for a while, or yeah, basically that's it. <laughs> so I found it funny. I've only bought one pattern this year, and it's this one. So yeah, anyway, um, the next cast on is not really cast on yet, <laughs> because it's only a swatch, as I mentioned, it's the um, test knit I'm doing for Kadri, and it is the um, lila top, so I can show you a picture here. Um, it's very similar to this one, it's a boat neck summer top, but it's not in garter, it's in stockinette with some garter details. And I only have the swatch here, that's actually drying. And this is the biggest swatch I have ever knit in my entire life. <laughs> so, this is knit using leftover yarns I have from... It's also right here. <laughs> it's also drying after my laundry. So, it's the same yarn as this one. This is the... Uh, this is the Moonset Tea by Ozeta. And I knit that last year using Estiva by Lani Vendole, which is an Italian brand and it's a mix of 30% linen and 70% wool, local wool from them. It's a non super wash blend and it's super lovely. I mean, this is one of my most worn garments, but the yarn is a little bit itchy, like just enough to be kind of uncomfortable, so I like to wear it, but I don't know if you see what I mean, but sometimes when you wear something itchy, the first day is fine. The second, it starts to get a little bit annoying, and on the third, you are scratching yourself everywhere, and it's like, impossible. <laughs> and yes, of course, I wear the same t-shirt three days in a row, and I don't care. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, I have I had bought four skins. It's they are 50 gram skins, and this is almost a lace weight. It's a 300 meters per 50 grams, and I used only two and a half for this T-shirt. So I had one and a half left, and I didn't know what to do with because, as I mentioned, it's a little bit scratchy. So I didn't want it to have something too close fitting, but at the same time, it's not enough to do another T-shirt. So that meant I would need um, a camisole, but uh, like camisole that's not really tight, like not the mini mock neck, obviously. <laughs> so yeah, this is the yarn, and I decided to use this yarn for this test knit, but. The gauge is like a loose fingering, it's uh, 24 stitches by 30, 36 rows. <laughs> and as I mentioned, this is a laced weight, almost. It's uh, 600 meters per 100 grams. So it's a little bit pushing it <laughs> to get such a loose gauge, but it's working. So on the bottom half, I used 3.5 millimeter needles, which are the suggested ones, and on the top I use 3.75 and first it's not see-through, I guess I mean, kind of, because there is light coming from behind, but if I put it like this, yeah, I don't think you can, I mean you can see my hand, but I don't wear underwear, and you are probably not going to see the details of everything that's happening on my skin, so it should be fine should be fine. And I have a little bit... my gauge is a little bit too tight with the 3.5 but I'm correct with the 3.75 which is perfect. So I think I can use that yarn. This is the leftover skin. I have like maybe 20 grams here and I have another full skin of 50 grams and I need I think 40... no 400 meters for my size, size 2. Um, and I have I think 450 meters, so should be fine. And I'm gonna need it uh, shorter anyway, so I have plenty of yarn. So I'm still gonna have leftovers. <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is my next cast on. I'm happy it worked out because I was I was really worried. What can happen uh, with uh, when you use a smaller yarn than recommended is that you can sometimes get the stitch gauge, but the row gauge is off. But it worked. For this one, it's fine, so... Whew. <laughs> I can use stash yarn, so yeah, I'm super excited about it, and I'm gonna cast on probably this weekend uh, if I'm if I get tired of the mini mock neck. I have this one that will be ready. I can't wait! <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh, yeah, so as I mentioned, this one is a little bit too thick. It's too warm. It's too just not really fitting for warm summer days. And the Lila top is very similar to this one, and it's going to be like super lightweight, really. So it's gonna be perfect. Except it's gonna be a little bit itchy. <laughs> so I just hope uh, it will be fine. I don't know. We'll have to see. Anyway, it will probably be done uh, by next episode. So so subscribe if you don't want to miss the end of this story. <laughs> anyway, so the next. Thing I want to talk about is uh, my next cast on, which is the other test knit I got, um, unexpectedly, <laughs> and it is the Lakes Stripe by Ozeta, which is exactly like the Lakes T, but with stripes. <laughs> I'm not sure it was really necessary to do a whole other pattern for that, but if you followed me uh, in the few Whatever episode I mentioned, I really wanted to knit the lakes or the tin number one by my favorite things knit. Wow, my favorite things knitwear. <laughs> uh, but I wasn't sure which one. And when she put out the test for this one, I was like, if I get the pattern for the lakes, then I can just skip the stripes and I have the lakes without stripes, which is exactly what I wanted. So I signed up and I got it. <laughs> so um, yeah, I had to buy some yarn for this one, uh, because I def definitely didn't have anything in my stash, and I bought the most beautiful yarn ever! <laughs> I'm so excited! So I went to my local yarn shop and I found 
I mean, I knew what I wanted to get, but I have been wanting to try this yarn for a long time. And I knew it was at this shop, and I wasn't sure I would find colors that would really make my heart sing. And I found the most beautiful opera of colors. <laughs> the pairing is just perfect. So here is what I got. Oh my god, this is so beautiful. <laughs> I'm so excited. So as you can tell, it's... Um, I still don't know how you say that. Isea? Isea? Yeah, this one. <laughs> and the yarn is 302, which is a blend of 50% linen, 30% cotton, and 20% lyocell. They are 50 gram balls, and they are 175 meters each. And if you need to know, to know something about me, is that I am obsessed with purple and green together. Like, I love it so much. <laughs> It's just the most beautiful thing in the world. I have so many random stuff at my place that are purple and green. Like, first, hi, purple, green. <laughs> I just I just find it fascinating. I think it's just so good together. It's very unexpected and it's kind of, kind of fresh. And it just looks so, so nice. And this is also um, like a very muted purple. It's almost blue, but it's definitely a purpley shade. So it's not too in your face. And they are just perfect. Wow. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh so yeah, um, I'm going to swatch this uh, probably when I come home from the weekend holiday. Um, but I can't wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> so yeah, I got four of these and three of this. I think three is too much. I'm probably going to knit it a little bit shorter. So yeah, probably four main color and two contrast color will be enough. We will see. It's a test knit. We don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> so yeah, that's it for the next cast on. And if you saw the latest episode, you probably saw that I did a lot of uh, planning. I have a knitting journal where I basically plan my month out for what I want to knit uh, in the next few weeks. And when I got the test knits, all my plans Blew out the window, <laughs> of course, because I had to switch everything around to make room for them, but it's gonna be fine. It's really making me even more excited than I was before, so it's a good thing, I guess. So, yeah, there's that. And both of them have the same deadline, which is the, um, the first week of June, I think. It's, we have four, four and a half weeks, kind of, so yeah. I think the lila top I can do in a week easily. And the lake stripes probably two weeks, if everything goes smoothly. But it should be fine. I'm not concerned about that. Uh, I think that's it. So now the only thing that's left is my battery. <laughs> I need to change it. All right. So um, I'm now thinking that I forgot to mention that the um, the lila top is not size inclusive. Kadri is never size inclusive, but. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it would be super easy to modify, you just have to literally just add stitches to the middle and lengthen the armholes. And probably add more armhole shaping and maybe cast on more stitches at the underarm. So yeah, it really wouldn't be difficult to modify. But still, it's annoying. It's even more annoying that it's so easy to grade to bigger sizes, so why is it not? But yeah, whatever. Um, I wanted to mention that I always try to knit patterns that are size inclusive because that's what I believe in. However, um, I myself do not fit in standard grade grading anyway, like never. Even though my bust size is in the usual range, I have to do a lot of modifications, so I don't feel like I'm really included myself in the usual size inclusive range. Which is, it's making me a little bit feeling weird because we are doing a lot of effort to include people to all the bust sizes, but not to all the body shapes. And I'm like, why, why would we do all the effort for the people that have a big or small bust, but not for the people that have weird body shapes? Like, there's no reason. <laughs> and yeah, I kind of allow myself to sometimes pick patterns that are not size inclusive because I'm not included anywhere, ever, ever. <laughs> so
So yeah, that's my kind of my logic. Um, if you're wondering uh, why I say I'm a size inclusive, I advocate for size inclusivity, and yet still need patterns that are not always size inclusive. That's because they are maybe size inclusive, but not shape inclusive. And yeah, I I need to make modifications anyway. So sometimes I just pick something because for me the result is the same. I will have to modify it. Anyway, I hope you get my point. <laughs> so yeah, uh, let's get to the last thing I wanted to say, which is uh, some acquisitions I have that I completely forgot to show <laughs> because I got them right after the Swiss Yarn Festival and I already had a lot of acquisitions to show uh, from the festival and I didn't want to add something I had bought two months before because it was a pre-order and then I forgot. <laughs> so yeah, this is um, yarn from Woolbury Fiber Company. Um, it was the pre-order for the best of 2023 member collective, members collective colorways. So basically, basically what they do is they have each month two colorways that are exclusive to the membership that I'm not a part of. Um, and only the members can get the colorways. But every year, kind of, they do a best of where they will select all the best colors <laughs> from the precedent year and they do a pre-order so you get a chance to buy the colors even if you were not in the membership. And there was one color that was uh, in the collective's membership from last year that I got absolutely, completely obsessed about. And it is the colorway Frost, which is this one. And it's like so beautiful. <laughs> it's like, as, as the name implies, is this one, yes, up. <laughs> it's like Frost. It's the coldest shade of purple and blue. And it looks just like a frosty, frosty morning. I don't know, it's beautiful, I really really like it. And I got two bases, so this one is uh, Rambouillet, I'm gonna say it in French, <laughs> it's a French name, <laughs> Rambouillet Worsted. So it's uh, basically a kind of merino, it's a French merino, and it's super soft and squishy, <laughs> I like it. Um, I bought this one because I wanted to try out the new base, and I thought it could be nice to knit a hat in this, yeah. Um, so I bought a single skin of this one. I wanted to try the base before committing to a whole sweater quantity in the future, maybe, one day, probably. <laughs> so yeah, I have a single skin of this one. It's even better than I imagined. It's so nice. I want to sleep with it. I need to <laughs> emotionally support myself with both of them. <laughs> um, anyway, so, and then I bought four skins of the merino fingering which is uh, just a 100% superwash merino base so I have four skins and they are beautiful <laughs> I really love this color so much wow um, and the thing is <laughs> I bought this at the beginning of February I mean I ordered them for the pre-order uh, but in the meantime, my plan for this sweater quantity has changed, so this is like the only sweater quantity in my stash that doesn't have a plan. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it, and it's stressing me out. <laughs> I'm gonna find something, of course. It's four skins of lovely, lovely fingering weight yarn. I'm gonna find something, but I don't know what yet. And I don't want to like use a skin for something and then be left with only three because I am sure, I am certain that I will need four for what I want to do when I pick a project and I'm gonna be sad that this one is gone. So no, I want to keep all of them together. I don't know what I'll do. Maybe a dress. I don't know. I will see. So this is my acquisitions. <laughs> I love them so much. Oh, they're beautiful. <laughs> I'm kind of regretting, I should have gotten two skins of non super wash also, but yeah, I was afraid it would be a little bit too purple. This one is non super wash and it's definitely a little bit more purple than those, and I was afraid it would lean too much to the purple, but actually it's still beautiful, so I should have gotten two more. Maybe I will have a, an occasion in the future, I don't know. Yeah, whatever. So this is my acquisitions, and... And I think that's it for today. Yeah. 
I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm now going to edit this as fast as I can and then prepare my bag for the weekend and leave for climbing adventures. I'm super excited, so yeah, I'm gonna go now. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have time to knit on the things you love. And stay tuned if you want to see the result of both test knits and my mini mock tech and everything. Uh, yeah, so as I said, subscribe <laughs> if you don't want to miss on that. And you can also, as always, leave me a like. And the latest episode, I don't know what happened, but it got like a lot, a lot more views <laughs> than any other episode. So thanks for the support. That was very unexpected, but yeah, it was really nice to see. I probably mostly have to thank the algorithm god, but still, I'm also thanking you guys for the support and the lovely comments I got on this one. So we will see if this episode does just as well as the last one. And yeah, um, thank you from the bottom of my heart and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.